big name Hollywood actor would come along and saying, I want to play Dalen. I was like, sorry, Dawson's better than you. <laughs> you can go. <laughs> Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to this behind the scenes of uh, Shadow of the Conqueror, the short film. I'm here on set with Shad, and I just wanted to ask you, how was your experience? I'm genuinely amazing. I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> it seems cliche, but I'd almost call it life-changing for a number of reasons. Um, one, the uh, kind of emotional satisfaction and amazement of seeing what's been happening has been incredible. And I'll always remember that. Uh, two, the experience of working so insanely hard on a project, but in a collaborative way where I see so many other people working just as hard, sometimes even harder, is, is, is an uplifting experience. Uh, just this environment of collaboration and a joint vision. Like I said, I, I will think I'll remember that my whole life. I can't comprehend this, this, what you've had to juggle to bring this stuff together. That's well, the crazy. scale of this project is uh, <laughs> over anything I've done before. Yeah, Let's just say that. I've seen difficulties arise and been part of trying to solve the difficulties in the process as well and stuff like that. Uh, and it's not easy, like, like there has been so <laughs> there's always there's problems every day, uh, but the fact that you've been able to keep the ship on course is amazing. Like, um, and I think I hope everyone can appreciate that this whole project only exists thanks to Dylan. Dylan was the one who reached out to me in the first yeah. process, and from the get-go, it was him that pushed it to where it is now, and it's all credit to this man right here. And so, uh, <laughs> like. Yeah, it's Thanks worth. So much. Oh no, I, I, I'm, I'm genuinely not only impressed but amazed by what you've been, <laughs> what you've managed to put. Like, this is the thing. I didn't expect that this to be the like the, the short film to be this good. Like, look at the set we're on. I, I didn't expect the set to be this good. Um, and I had hopes, but there are a lot of people that try really, really hard, and they make things that are like, you know, <laughs> and so. I have to admit, I had reservations. I didn't know what to expect. Like, what would be the finished quality of this short film coming over here? I was ready to come, was ready to help, be a part, do anything I can. But getting here, uh, I've been genuinely blown away by, like, when seeing the footage, the performances, like, genuinely blown away by the quality and what what level you've been able to bring to. And it's all, it's all you. <laughs> You're the one who's brought us here. And so you deserve the credit. What I, what I always say is that the, the person running the ship, their job is to push the main vision. Mm -hmm. The other people in the team just have to go in the same direction. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they don't. <laughs> and then sometimes, and that's they don't when mean they to, but sometimes they don't mean to, but they put a hole in the ship and you're like, oh crap. <laughs> and I've seen it. <laughs> I won't mention. <laughs> but yeah, that, and that's, for, for me, my job in the past three weeks has been just fixing the holes. <laughs> <laughs> and working so long, like, and we just want everyone to know, we're not getting paid for the work that we're putting into it. And Dylan is putting more work than anyone. And uh, that's the, the so when I say people have been committed, to, it, they're not only committing, people have been sacrificing to make this happen. Um, uh, and, uh, and even myself, okay, I, I wanted to fly over here on my own time, be part of it. Um, uh, and, um, you know, I find small opportunities here and there to maybe make your Shadowversity video. But while we're on set and we're all, like when, like when I'm on set, 100%, I'm there helping out in any way I can. And these days have been some of the most intensive days I've ever worked, like 12 to 15 hour days sometimes, because um, we, we have a short window to get it done. Yeah. Um, and so seeing everyone else's sacrifices, that just, that just I, 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 I don't want to be the one holding anything back and uh, I'm on board just as much. And so, yeah, and, and I'm not the only one doing it. 
Durham does more, and so many other people have been sacrificing so I've much. I've been here for 20 plus hour days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Which is... Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> like, and and we don't recommend you working these days. But no, <laughs> unfortunately, sometimes you like, especially with projects like this, you have limited time to get some really important stuff done. And if you want it to be done, you have to get it done. Yeah, it, uh, there's no time to. We we can't just say, oh, we'll push it back another week. <laughs> There, we we no won't way. have a set in another week, you know. Yeah. Like, like we won't have certain actors in another week. Uh, it's like. <laughs> there are so many pieces that need to fall together for the project to happen. Uh, Zach, the composer that you've seen on a few videos, uh, he talked with the, one of the makeup artists. And uh, so she was asking who was who because mm -hmm. she was only there for two days mm -hmm. uh, out of the whole shoot. And she didn't know a lot about the project. She, she just uh, got hired two, two days before we started mm -hmm. shooting. And she was surprised when he told her that I was not getting paid and that you were not getting paid on the project. She, mm -hmm. And she was like, the director and the producer are normally the first that get paid and the grunts that do mm -hmm. the dirty work don't get paid. I don't want to give myself one cent before everyone else has gotten their share. That's my take on it. And See, it's things like this that like have just made me realize like, the trust that I have in Dylan has just grown step by step. And it's when I see things like that, it's just uh, it just confirms I'm, like the trust is well placed um, because not only is he like Dylan and so many like everyone on the film that has been working, remarkably talented, but also genuine good people as well honorable people and and those are the type of people that I was like okay I could trust them with something that's very dear to me you know like my novel like, the adaptation of course what I, I, I want to get back into your experience so yes. what was exactly like you thought it was going to be what, what did you did oh. did you expect to see and that you're Gosh. like yeah this this was uh, what I was thinking that's a good question um I uh, didn't know where to place my expectations. That was the, that was the, uh, the honest concern I had. Um, sometimes I like to go on Amazon Prime because it has, Amazon Prime has weird movies on it and sometimes really low budget ones. And I like to watch bad movies for the sake of watching bad movies sometimes. And, and I found one, which is like a low budget fantasy movie. And it was, it was bad. Like the sets were bad, the acting was awful. And I was watching it and I was thinking, they still probably spent like comparatively lots of money, like for the average person, like huge amounts of money to make this film. And they were probably all dedicated and try their hardest on it. And it turned out awful. And I honestly I had to ask myself, could the short film turn out this way? Is it, I, 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 well, I, it could. It could have. Uh, I did. Well, I, it's not going to, not from what I've seen. No, and not from what I've seen either. That's but... not possible from what I've seen. And also from what I've been able to be a part of and help it, help do as well. Like, well, there are still a lot of things that can go wrong. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not going to hide it. I'm yeah. not going to hide it. And we I, still have all of the post-production to do. So <laughs> the editing could go wrong. Mm -hmm. the, the the VFX could go wrong. The publishing could go wrong. <laughs> so there's a lot of things yeah. that still no, can There's go no wrong. such thing as a perfect film. But the, there are some we moments. We have a strong yeah, base. We started well, very strong. And there are some moments and aspects of the film that already, like what I, what I saw being captured are phenomenal like and has made me genuinely excited to, to show the world like and and even if the film isn't perfect if we can show people those elements that's more than I could have dreamed because remember I, I was like I I had nowhere to place my expectations I had worries I hoped for the best and so for answering your question what turned out the way I envisioned it I held back envisioning it. I mean, I had the dream of like, I'd like to yeah. see this. Um, and we not only do we hit some of those dreams, but some in some instances we surpass them. Like what we have is better than what I envisioned, what I had hoped for. And that's what's amazing. That's like, there's what is genuinely like, <laughs> yeah. Can you give 
give concrete examples. Well, cause... I don't want to give any spoilers, but there is a an emotional delivery, and I mentioned this yeah. on the fa on, on my Facebook and uh, YouTube channel that uh, Dawson, who plays Thalen, um, uh, there is a moment where he uh, delivers um, uh, a, a series of lines from Thalen's perspective when it's in an extremely emotionally vulnerable uh, state, and uh, and it was unbelievable like uh you know a moment that i'll remember forever like that it's it's interesting like i wrote that scene i knew the power of the lines um and i would play that scene in my head and i and uh, i i always felt the passion in it right but then seeing it and i'm not kidding dawson injected emotion into those lines that i didn't initially see like he, he injected a level of sorrow that came out in his quivering voice and eyes that just floored me, I'm not kidding. To the point where that delivery was better than what I envisioned in the book. Some people were crying on set. <laughs> like, he got a standing <laughs> ovation afterwards. We're not kidding, right? And so if you want the, the thing that's, uh, yeah, that even went beyond my dreams, that's one of the examples, it was just like, <laughs> I can't, I'm speechless when I think about it. And that, I, I can't wait for people to see that. I mean, oh. <laughs> On another note, is there anything that you were disappointed about or anything that uh, uh, you thought that would be better or okay. different? Let, let's say different. Okay, well, see, this is the thing. I am a savage critic. I'm a savage yeah. critic, of, critic of my own work and I can be, and if you see my YouTube channel, I'm a savage critic of things and so yes of course there are things th that i wish we could have done better okay the thing is though i also know the limitations we have a very limited budget and when i came here i wasn't i'm not here to say we need to do well actually every place where i saw we could improve something on i spoke up if we had the capacity to fix something or i felt that we could, could fix it I spoke up and I've been speaking up a lot. You can ask, like, and the amount of input everyone has uh, asked from me and let me give has been a dream come true. There, there's another thing that surpassed my expectations. I didn't know what level, like, uh, yeah, I was going to play a character. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know what level you guys, in terms of the feedback and suggestions, I didn't know what level you wanted from me or you'd be willing to let me give. Yeah. And it's got to the point where, yeah, asking, you guys are asking for as much as possible and, uh, to the point, well, we want to be true to your vision. Yeah, to the point where I it, got, it literally got to the point where uh, Francis and Dylan, they were happy for me to give every single bit of input I, I, that came to my mind, which was a dream card. Like, that doesn't happen. <laughs> like, well, the, I've told you mm -hmm. at, at first when, mm -hmm. you, when you came in, uh, please go through Francis yes. before doing, uh, giving mm -hmm. suggestions because we still want Francis to be the director and right, to and take the is. final I mean, decision. Oh, totally, absolutely. But, you always did that and you always respected Francis' decision. Mm -hmm. And he always listened to what you had to say because he trusts that you have a great vision for <laughs> the the book and you want this universe to be represented well. Anything that I saw is like, what if we did this? Or, you know, what do we do that? And so there have been legitimate points where I have seen problems, but I was able to step in and just say, this needs to be fixed. And then everyone was like, Right on board. And like I give an example in a Shadowversity video, I'm not sure if it'll be out when this goes out when I do my video, yeah. but an example where I saw a big problem in the fight scene where uh, Dalen is fighting thugs and Dalen has superpowers, the thugs don't and the thugs aren't dying. And that's a problem. It's like, why aren't the thugs dying? We need an answer. Um, and this is the exact type of criticism I would have, I would lob against anything. If I was watching this as a critic, I'd be going, this is a massive plot hole. And so I saw that as like, guys, this is what's going on. And then everyone's like, instead of saying, stop getting in the way, Shadows, I was like, no, we need to fix it. And then what was so satisfying to me is that um, uh, Francis and Dylan, they looked to me, what would be the best fix for this situation? And as the author, I'd be the most informed person to be able to know the context, to be able to give, insert a single line, which recontextualized it and lifted the scene, increased the stakes and justified why these thugs aren't dying so easily. And it's actually such a great, like, it's such a cool element of the world building that we've done in the armor. Um, yes, because it's inserting something that's not even the, in, in the, the book. book. And I've loved for, for that, mm -hmm. that you've been willing so much to change a few things uh, 
and I would not have been comfortable changing things like that. <laughs> but since you I'm the author, give, the, uh, <laughs> give the okay, and I, I really love the fact that mm. you see, okay, we're in a different medium. Yes, this is a, so this we is need an to adaptation. Absolutely. Adapt things based on the medium to mm. give the uh, the best experience possible yes. of the universe. Yeah, um, and I. I don't know if other authors, I, of course there are other authors that understand that as well. And I have heard experience of others not understand where, you know, they're not willing to compromise. Uh, and so coming into this, I've always had that mindset where, oh, this is a different medium. Uh, for instance, um, another thing, something that I was knew from the get go is that in a visual medium, you need something, a, a mechanical mechanism to cue the audience in to when Dalen is using his powers. In the book, I can just say, Dalen bonded light to his strength and then punch someone. I do it more with better prose. I'm just speaking off the cuff here. Um, but I can just say, Dalen bonds light. It happens. In the, in the visual medium, there's no narrator telling the audience when he's bonding light. How does the audience know he's using his powers? There needs to be a cue of some kind. And so, and well, there there was another option. Well, mm -hmm. well we have the option we used, but mm -hmm. there's other options that we could have used. We could have used that. There are multiple options, and I. But this thing, I knew there had to be something different because you couldn't have just done a whole perfect translation from the book. Do the same because the audience needs to. There needs to be a cue for the magic, so they know what's going on. Okay, so the magic in Everfall is based on light, and like you can see, you can see the light sources in real life, and you can see where the light lands. So like on our skin, we have the lights that land, mm -hmm. but you can't see the path that the light travels through, yes. unless you put some kind of smoke or things like that. So how do you represent the magic light moving? Uh, you really can't unless you put some like magical energy mm -hmm. flowing, like you would do yeah. in a, yeah, yeah. Fa fantasy magic, mm -hmm. but I, I really wasn't convinced of doing this. Yeah, I really thought it would look cheesy mm -hmm. and and because one of the other options was to have him glow when he uses his powers. This is what we did in the graphic novel, and it worked fine for the graphic novel because they're still pictures. I wouldn't have been fully convinced that would work in a, a film because that could be too jarring and too, uh, no, like, because sometimes he uses it, tries to use his powers covertly as well. Yeah. And then it, glowing is too much of a cue for people to see. And so, you know, uh, what do you do? <laughs> so we decided that instead of him being affected or seeing the path, mm -hmm. that the ambient light around him would be affected. Mm -hmm. and that's how we decided to affect the magic in the yes. short film. And that doesn't happen in the book, but it's a needed change for it to work effectively in the short film. And for the covert thing, when David and Dalen uses the powers covertly, I, we can work with that, with the flickering lights. So, you know, sometimes people won't be aware that's how light binding works. And sometimes you might have a sunstone you can draw the light from and the well, sunstone I, is used instead using of Using his powers outside, it won't flicker yeah, the sun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's another, you know, just challenge that would need to be faced, how to cue the audience when he's outside. And so, these are obvious things that, you know, and sometimes not obvious, sometimes people are oblivious to these things. Uh, so, I, yeah, I totally came into the adaptation process knowing that changes need to be made because it's a different medium and different mediums have different strengths and weaknesses and sometimes they just simply need to be addressed. My kind of feeling is that it, the changes, of course, should be true to what the source material is. And I feel yeah. these changes are. Uh, the change we did with the thugs is actually built on a pre-existing world building element that I hadn't had in the book, but I existed in there. Again, I, why it's so lucky I'm here and why I wanted to get here so much is because I could draw on all the knowledge I have of the book material to be able to come up with a satisfying answer, which Dylan and Francis, no one would have known that solution no. at all. It wouldn't have been an option. And so what could have been done then? I was like, well, what I would have done is I would have changed the choreography, mm. which would have taken a lot much of time. more time. Oh yeah. my goodness. And mm. we were already <laughs> yeah, quite we in the time crunch oh. for that. Yeah. Um, and the choreography that was there, was actually really good. I enjoyed the stunts that were there. Um, so instead of rewriting it, we found a fix. Um, and so this is an example of, yeah, there, I have seen problems, but I've tried to help and fix them where I can. And when there are problems that can't be fixed, I understand we do what we can with what we have. And because yeah, 
a lot of people don't don't see the limitations that we have. Yeah. Because they're gonna, just going to see the final result. Then they're not going to be even people that work on the set don't see mm -hmm. every problem that we have to deal with. They just see. I haven't seen every problem, and I've seen no. lots of problems that Dylan had been is addressing and everything. And I still feel I've only seen the surface of what really he's been having to work through and manage. Yes. And, it's, and this is not to say that the pro this project is plagued with problems. It's just that when you have so many people working on a project, there's so many cogs, and to get every single cog working in unison is just a massive challenge. I could have worked in any field mm -hmm. uh, of art. I could have done paintings. I could have done uh, VFX. Mm -hmm. But I really wanted to work in film because I like working with people. Mm -hmm. I think it's very motivating and it, I, I feel like having the energy of everyone else around. It is motivating. Pushing I... to all work to a single goal yeah. and working on a project that the the project itself, so Shadow of the Conqueror is going to take probably, is going to have taken probably three to four years to make mm -hmm. for a short film that is going to last 20 minutes. So the film's going to... Mm be 20 minutes long. And, th and this is budget constraints and also manpower as well. I like the amount yeah. of people are working on but it. We're shooting for uh, eight days. So uh, you have a very limited amount of time with limited resources, limited manpower, and you have to m make <sighs> all of this work. And it's the challenge, it's the... <laughs> It's such a rush. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's the, the and I've, I've felt that. That's why I've been enjoying this experience because I felt that, and I felt the push, the the like the passion everyone has, and that just has pushed me further to the point where I uh, I struggle with chronic fatigue, but I've been able to push through it and just be on board the whole time, and it's just been amazing, like absolutely amazing. There is vast, like, when I say vast, like 95, 99% of things, right, that I've been blown away and impressed by versus the small little things where I think that could have been done better. And of course, I think every, like Dylan, Francis, everyone involved would wish like, you know, it's not going to be perfect. We wish we, it could have been. Everyone all wishes it could have been. But I understand being here that I understand limitations. Um, and, uh, and so we work with what we have and the quality that I've been seeing being produced with the limitations, the challenges, uh, the budget constraints, everything. Like if people could understand that, that will blow, they'll think they did this on this budget, it'll blow people away. It has blown me away. Like I, 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 I'm astounded by them. And I'm saying that too, remember the reservations I've had. I'm honest about this stuff, okay? And seeing the quality that is being produced on right when I'm here present uh, and seeing what they're making, yeah, I, I, I'm astounded, genuinely astounded. The film isn't static shots. Sometimes they're, they're dynamic shots with lighting and everything, and it's not always just front on. But then there's like, you know, um, uh, flowing shots where the camera is on the, 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 the dolly track and it's rotated and it looks amazing and it's so smooth. And, and so there is artistic camera work in this film. Right? And and seeing that like the quality of the cameraman we have, and then it's all like, you know, you know when you see like a, a set production, and uh, and you say that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like here when I got here. And how many people have been working? Like, because you got you got um, a costume on hand ready, you got makeup on hand ready, you got uh, you got the, everyone on, you got the guys on the boom mics, you got the cameraman working, and all these assistants. And then, it's, it, it, how many people have been on set like? Uh, well, on average, on, well, on average, we've had twenty people, uh, and uh, but total so far that I've worked on the film were, I think, uh, fifty. See, and that's again incredible. <laughs> like when I got here, I, one of the when I saw how professional the actual you know set was, with uh, everyone knowing their role, knowing what they're doing, um, and it, that was like. Again, another affirmation, confirmation was like, this is, this, you know, is uh, being done with the right approach and the right effort and uh, it has the potential. People, a lot mm. of people that work on the set are not professionals. They don't do this uh, <laughs> for, for work mm. on most days, uh, but they still knew what they had to do. One thing I've seen is a lot of people that don't have a lot of experience in their, the field that they're doing on set 
but they're they have so much willingness and they want it to work mm -hmm. so much that it compensates a hundred percent for the, their lack of experience. Yeah, and then you've hired people who are claiming to be professionals in certain things, and they have delivered work that is not up to standard at all. Not at all. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, when I because when I got here, not having been on a set, I didn't know what you just said. I just thought these are people who know what they're doing and they're doing it really well, and it's producing amazing results. <laughs> so, if they were not willing and really. 100% in for this project, it would not have worked. Mm -hmm. And it has been, uh, I've seen really how much effort each and every one of them had put, have put in the project. I, I can tell you, if you want to do something in life, just go 100% <laughs> in it. And it might take some time. Mm -hmm. It might take a lot of effort, but you've finished by getting to it. Yeah, I, that's it literally takes doing it, do, do the action. I mean, I wanted to be a successful author. And so that required writing nine novels that no one will ever see because most of them are horrible, right? But it required writing, you know, constantly to develop and get better at it to the point where I wrote something that, well, I felt was kind of special. I had something that really came from well, honestly, it came to better. It came together better than I expected it did, and uh, um, and the, that writing that book, like you, Dylan read it, and then he saw something in it and felt that he wanted to do something with it, and he's got a vision, and yeah, look where we are now. And at first, so you've said it in another video we we made that. At first, you thought that we were just going to be three guys in a backyard. <laughs> that doing... was the first contact. You, we, you're like, I want to make a short film of your novel. I was like, you know, and my impression was like, you know, friends in the backyard with a, with a camera, just, you know, well, doing the and thing. And at first, uh, like Zach talked about it a bit, but it's not far from that what we were <laughs> expecting is... When did that change? Like, when did you start to uh, want to because, try and push no, it to... Because uh, but for, for me, it's I'm always pushing every project as far as it can go. Mm -hmm. But if I have zero budget, what am I going to do? Yeah, you have to be in the backyard with friends. I, yeah. it's, I would have gone in a wood or something and mm -hmm. found the best actor that I could find locally that mm -hmm. uh, was willing to do it for free. And that's what we would have done. And, and uh, it would have been more than like two, three friends. So yeah. we would have been maybe 10 people working mm -hmm. on that for free during a weekend. But mm -hmm. And like, I would have received that as just a, a wonderful thing, you know? I wouldn't have taken it too seriously, but I was like, that's awesome, you know? And and so, um, yeah, that first email that Dylan sent me, I was like, I was like, please, I'll be my guest. I'd love to see what, what, what you do with it. But then- but I, I'm, <laughs> I'm always pushing things forward. Mm -hmm. So uh, before doing that, I still, the first thing that, the thing that was the most important to me was to have a solid script and to have mm -hmm. Shad say, yeah, your script is solid and you go forward with it. <laughs> Which I didn't say at first. <laughs> so it no, it, 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 it was... Uh... Uh... <laughs> but you picked the right scenes that worked well. It has the, like the scenes that, you know... You well, at first I wanted to out. use the scene where Arik meets Dalen for the first time. Oh, yeah. yeah in yeah. his house. Uh, but it, it just didn't have no. a, a right mm -hmm. ending. Mm -hmm. And in a short film, the end. The ending of the short film is what's most important because yeah. a lot of short films just skip the introduction, skip mm -hmm. the, and you go right into the action. Well, yeah, and you often need to because it's a short film. So uh, you yeah. have to tell the story in a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically like um, I would tell you, okay, well, uh, take your book and give me two chapters of it. <laughs> And uh, that's the, it has to tell the story, mm -hmm. the whole story in two chapters. Well, what's surprising is that the section that you, are, you ultimately picked contextualizes the con the core concept of the story perfectly. And that's why I, and, and we went with that. I didn't write those chapters together with that intention at all, but they just happened to be there, and you found it, and it works. It works great. Like ah. Uh, it's it's like a a, a miniaturized version mm. of the book. Yeah, and, uh, you, and it, it also 
leaves us on a cliffhanger yep, that yep. leads to the potential of doing something else. After. Exactly. And uh, there was another, oh yeah. And the sections that we picked for uh, the main character, Dalen specifically, yep. have two very important aspects of his character that come out in very prom sorry, in great prominence in these scenes, which are really important. And it's in relation to Dalen's guilt, but also his inner monster. And and uh, the fact that these, you know... Um, uh, and we also have his cocky attitude. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. His arrogance, his bravado and stuff. But the big ones are those two big ones as yep. well. And the fact that these scenes have is such strong moments of those aspects of his character is just... It, it would be hard to say, like, you couldn't have caught the concept of the, sh of the story without those aspects so powerfully delivered. And that's why I'm saying this short film does that, because it has those aspects. You see the full range of Dalen's character and his complexity. And uh, oh, and that, that's where I get really satisfied. It's like, when did you start to see the possibility of a larger project and start, and they're all, or start to push it to a larger project? Um, uh, so, okay, if we go more in the, in the timeline of how things went, so mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, I emailed you first in October 2019. I, I cannot remember at all, so I will say yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's in January uh, 2020 that I recruited the first people to work on the project. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, Francis, Alex, Zach, mm -hmm. and Matt. After uh, Francis got on the project, he started doing the script, the script writing. So mm -hmm. I wrote the first five versions of the script. Mm -hmm. And now that we're shooting, we're at the 17th version of the script. <laughs> and that's not counting the minor revisions. And uh, just on those, like, my, like, those minor revisions, uh, as a... As a writer, there's some like the slightest little tweak sometimes give me the great, greatest satisfaction because especially when it's like the cherry on top that completes the scene. Um, and so being on set, I've been seeing opportunities for just like little cherries is like Ooh, little tweaks, little tweaks that just yeah, and and yeah, I, I I could not be happier with where the script has ended up. It's just I'm so satisfied. But it took so many versions to get here as well. So. I, at this time, uh, I think we we had discussed with you of maybe doing a Kickstarter, and mm -hmm. uh, again we were thinking, okay, it's gonna have some traction because there's Shadow of the Conqueror, the the name mm -hmm. on it. But now, but when we we weren't thinking that you were gonna support the project as much at this. Yeah, time. I, well, I wasn't really sure yet either. When we were saying, okay, we have a, a decent script, uh, we're ready to have our main actor because. We need that to do the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. And that's when we did the, the casting call. And, and so when I saw that they're doing a legitimate casting call, like a, it almost felt like an industry, like anyone who worked in any in the whole industry, if you're interested, you can audition. They were taking actual auditions for the role. That was a sign to me, it's like, you, you, you don't look for like a solid actor when it's a backyard project. And then there was this concept artwork as well and stuff like And so when I saw that... Yeah, because again, we yeah. needed concept art to show to uh, mm -hmm. the backers. That was the point where I realized they're trying to do something significant here. And if they're going to try and do something significant, I want to support it. I want to help out. And so they had the casting call. I reposted the casting call on my YouTube channel. And, and that's really when it blew up. The response to that, what well, I was not expecting, I, it blew me away. I was like, what? Yeah, like, it was huge. And it was just to keep, uh, so on YouTube, on, the, on my YouTube channel, um, you have your videos and there's a thing called a community tab where you can make almost Facebook-like posts. It's, they're just text. You can post images yep. or link to other videos. And so I just post, pasted the text of the casting call and the response went nuts. It was like, wow. And, and basically, because you asked, when did the project grow bigger? And that's pretty much... <laughs> uh, I, so we went from thinking, oh, we're maybe going to have 20,000 to put on props, costumes, and sets. Mm -hmm. And we went from that to, oh, we have uh, 600 applicants for roles in the film. 600. And there was 400 for Dalen, wasn't it? Yeah. 400 
full. Like, it's crazy. I, just... I, I, I was receiving so many emails that I had to ask my fiance to stop working <laughs> to help me answer emails. <laughs> and it, what also really surprised me was the excitement in my fans and community for a short film adaptation. Like when they heard it, they just went nuts for it. They, they really wanted to see it, which gave me a bit of confidence that, okay, you know, if they're gonna wanting to kickstart it, there seems like there might be a chunk of support willing, waiting there. And at this point we were saying, okay, well, with the interest that we have and the support that Chad is giving us, okay, with 60,000, we can do something. Uh, and the, at this point we started hiring a bit more people to work on mm -hmm. the project um, uh, to really have a mm -hmm. solid foundation. So before the Kickstarter launched, uh, you found the the actor to play Daily yeah. Dawson, right? And this was one of the next big moments for me, like because it, like you could have a, an insanely high budget film if you don't have the right actor in the role and either they don't suit it or they just can't act very well, the film sucks, okay? But if you can find the perfect person to play the role, that can elevate the film on so many levels, even if it has little flaws on the sides that, you know, can't really be, you know, resolved because of budget restrictions and stuff. And when I saw Dawson's audition, that was a oh my goodness moment. Like, I, and even to this day, I cannot imagine a person fitting that role better than Dawson. Like, it, it's uncanny, uncanny. And when seeing him in costume, it was f like freaky for me because I'm looking at my character. And because I see, I see a lot of adaptations and so often the character, the actor is like, yeah, I can see it. I like, and sometimes you can really see it, but it's not perfect. Like Dawson, it's hard to imagine a more perfect person and to fit the role. To, to be honest, there, there were a, a few very, very good candidates. Mm -hmm. One of the, these candidates was Bryce. Bryce ended up playing Detective Bright in the short film, and Bryce is a great actor, right? Um, and so this isn't about acting skill, it's actually about just sometimes the look, okay? Filling uh, the role. Filling the role. And Dawson has this glare that he can do, it's just, it's, it's Dayless the Congre, like it's unbelievable. Um, un flippin' believable. And also like, yeah, man, you know, in his delivery as well. And so, Seeing his audition, it was like, you, you, you guys found the perfect, like the perfect actor for the role. I was and like, again, D D Dawson is such a warrior. Yeah, he he puts so so much effort into and into it, the role. And not, he cares and about like he, he he drove here from Minnesota because <laughs> he wanted so much yeah. to be here. And I think no one has been. Uh, in a large measure harder on Dawson than he is on himself. He is so passionate about this project and he wants to do the, he wants to be, do the perfect job. And in my opinion, he has, but in some, like, like sometimes when he feels he did, like he can get frustrated with himself, but it's coming from the, the, the desire he has to uh, do uh, the perfect job. And I, he's harder on himself. He's harder on himself than, than, like, than, than anybody else. He is perfect for the role and his deliveries have just been incredible. But also seeing that passion and desire he has and drive to just nail it 100% is uh, just, I take as a, as a great kind of compliment, but also makes me so grateful for, you know, is just what he's doing for it. And also, this, some of these shoots have been really tough and long. Like, like I knew acting can be a really tough job, okay? But yeah. knowing something and understanding it from experience are vastly different things. And I got to experience something and now I have a deeper understanding of it. And I was, I was so surprised and shocked at the mental strain that is, that is put upon you in acting and being in the character role for so long and in such repetition, like because like if you're doing a, a let's say a role playing session with yeah. your friends, it's just so a, you, you it's might be acting mm -hmm. in your character, but it's only going to be for small bursts mm -hmm. for a few hours. Mm -hmm. But now you have to be on set with yeah. the stress of the set and and the camera pointed uh, at yeah. you, and you have to do that for 
10 hours straight. And then when you start to get tired and your eyes just are like feeling numb, it's a, it's a strenuous job. It really and, is. And you have to act like- Yeah, like it's not in there. <laughs> like it's just been five minutes yeah, that you've been exactly. there. exactly. <laughs> so that was a unique and wonderful experience we experienced. And I also enjoyed it. It was fun, because but it was tough. I'm not- th like, This scene is gonna last Maybe six minutes in the film? Yeah, but it took, how many hours a year? Like uh, maybe 10 hours? Down to 10 hours to get, because there are so many angles to capture and there's uh, so there's a lot of nuance in it. And there's four characters. And so if you want close-ups, you need to so, say, and you need safeties. And sometimes there's the takes that people miss. And so, yeah, like it's an, a and really it involved. Go, each take can go wrong on so many uh, yeah. levels. And when a character gets up and moves, you have a whole new series of ones that you want to get the angles right and then close-ups again. Um, and so, yeah, and again, I knew that intellectually. I knew that's, you know, what it takes to film certain scenes and fight scenes are a whole other topic as well that we have experienced as well because they're complex and they're at different angles and all that stuff. And so, yeah, the strain, and I was only in one scene, Dawson is in every scene and he's So not he's been complained. doing that for seven yeah. days straight. Plus the rehearsals yep. before. I mean, an absolute like machine, an absolute machine. Um, so incredible. And then, so going back to the thing that we're seeing when seeing Dawson and seeing that he, it was, perfect seems like a cliche, but it's the reality. When I saw it, I was like, oh my goodness. I, I that was that was a big fear. I like you know. I, People want to do adaptations and the key, most crucial thing is getting the right actor to fit the role, to portray the character, right? the character's the most th crucial that's thing. That's one thing I don't believe in is that finding a famous actor mm -hmm. to do the role is going to bring the role did, uh, more justice because, uh, I mean, uh, Mark Hamill wasn't very known before he did yeah. Star Wars, mm -hmm. but I feel like he did an amazing job yeah. on it. Same. I mean, Harrison Ford wasn't very well known either. I'm like, yeah, I totally agree. Like, fine, like getting the best actor you can get that fits the role the best is like, a, that. and that's why I wanted to open the role really at large because mm. nailing Dalen was oh, I, a, a make or break yeah, for this film. Yeah, like, you know big name Hollywood actor would come along and saying, I want to play Dalen. I was like, sorry, Dawson's better than you. <laughs> you can go. <laughs> like for this role, it's, like, it's hard for me to imagine anyone else in this role now because of how perfect, yeah, it's just been amazing. And so, sorry, that was the other big wake up moment for me. It was like, oh, this could be something awesome. Um, and the Kickstarter and... And now uh, we're here. Yeah. Basically. Wow. So uh, I want to thank again all of the cast and crew that worked on the film. Uh, because I know and I've seen all the effort that you've put into this. And uh, even though I'm very good at a, at a lot of things, I cannot do this mm. without all of you. And it's true when he says that, by the way. No project like this can be done by one mm. person. Ah, yeah. It, it requires a team and mm. we've all worked together to bring this project. And that's exactly life. what I've noticed coming here. And that's one of the things that blow me away. It's like the, the dedication sacrificed by so many people, so many people not even getting paid because they 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 all believe in it. I believe in it, in this project. Uh, and we see something pretty special in it. And hey, it's a short film, we get it. And you know, it's not gonna be perfect, but there is gonna be, oof, I was excited to share this. There, oh. there are going to be some exceptional moments. Yeah, yeah. And, oh man. Th not, I think people like it. I'm very excited mm, you know, to that see that It's going to be noticed. It's going to be noticed. <laughs> so thanks everyone for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more about this amazing project <laughs> that we are working on. It's not going to be coming soon because we have a lot of VFX and a lot of post-production to make, but uh, we're gonna bring it to you as soon as we can. We're putting all of our efforts on it. You can be assured of that. And we will see you on the next adventure. Farewell.